Hon, hon, hon! I am an angry French baguette! Yun lang, yun palang ang sinisip-sip mong gas. He pretending to put things inside. Hand for skill. Uh-huh. I'm just talking and you're if you're still watching, what the frick are you doing with your life? Hello guys, so today we'll be reviewing the 2022 Peugeot 2008. I mean, look at this cute. He's a smiley boy. Yeah, looks so good. I like the headlights, the claw fang thing that everyone's talking about. And then the logo is so nice. It has an infinity symbol, so get na, which is cute. I think my favorite part about the front is that it looks like a smiley boy <laughs> with a big nose pad thing. Parang ano chibi lion, ganun nga. I really love this color. It's fusion orange and. It brightens up your gloomy weather. So the 208 is the smallest one they have. Siya yung, basically, siya yung PG in terms of Pidgeot evolution. <laughs> Here's the rear. The daylights look so good. So you get your 17 trapped in Goodyear Assurance. And oh my god, ang laki ng caliper. So you get front and rear disc brakes. So that's super nice. For a small car, the gas tank door is so big, hand for scale. That's so big. Mind you, this is a 1.2. But it blends so well with the lines. So yeah, that's cute and big and different. <laughs> so you have your dual exhaust tips. That's so cute. Engine-wise, this has a 1.2 liter pure tech turbocharged 3-cylinder engine. So that's gas. And 130 horses and 230 newton meters of torque mated to a six speed automatic. And look at this cute little brace. So it just goes like, goes like that. Here's the other side. <laughs> this little brace thing goes to show how much thought they put into designing the chassis. Now going inside. Yarn. It's so pretty. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> So the inside looks so good. Where's your key to the tree? Lion. Horn button. And what's interesting is this dashboard. So it has a 3D thing. So there's a screen up top that reflects here. So it gives you a 3D effect. Which is cool. And when you signal, it shows here. Very interesting. There you go. <laughs> Before I forget, look at this wheel. It's so small. And usually, I'm not a fan of not completely round wheels, but this one, it makes it work. You get your infotainment controls. So behind your wheel, you get your cruise control stuff. So this is under the... So it's here. Sorry, kids. This one. But what I kind of find a bit hard lang is that you control the aircon through here instead of having a separate physical module. It's a bit hard, major learning curve, but I think that's the price to pay to get a cleaner looking center dash thing. <laughs> the buttons are so tactile. Can you hear that? And look at this volume knob. It's like a rotary knob for your mechanical keyboard. I love it. Everything sounds so nice when you click them. So here in the middle, after your nice little buttons, you get your Android Auto input, the charging port, and your 12 volt. What I like about this one is you have your two row thing, so I can put like stuff on top. And if I don't want it to get super jumbled and mixed up, say with my phone. There you go. So you can kind of keep it organized, which is nice. So over here at the center, what's interesting is this is actually two levels of cup holder. It's kind of hard long when I used it. The couplets usually hit this. So I don't know if you, you put two drinks and you have to leave this open. So I'm not so sure about that. So here you think you get a tiny armrest compartment, but if you stick your hand inside, it goes all the way down there. To 
So that's pretty deep. Here is our parking handbrake button. And yeah, you got your driver mode controls over here. So there you go. So we have eco, normal mode, sports mode. I super love this carbon fiber weave thing going on all throughout the passenger door and the driver door across the dash. That makes it super sleek. And you have here your start stop. It's low and it's not exactly the easiest thing to reach, but it's isolated. You can't mistake it for anything else, which is nice. And what I super love about this is look at how deep the glove box is. Okay, we have our flashlight. Let me stick my hand in there so you guys can see. Ugh. Okay, this is what I can reach from the driver's side and it's all the way over there. That's crazy. So as a girl, I think I'm pinaka complaint ko na is this one. So it doesn't have light. Which is okay lang naman. But yeah, you know, when you need to do your makeup. <laughs> and yeah, it's nice. Um it's so driver centric. Everything faces me. Everything is within reach from the driver's position. So it's just a bit of like this. Everything is... My hand lands in all the controls super nicely and ergonomically. I feel like I'm a pilot in this i-cockpit design. Heading to the back of the car. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's pretty spacious. Yeah, this is my normal driving position. And I have so much room here at the back. And if you check out the headroom... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's like a lot, a lot of headroom here. So this is the rear space. Ugh. So that's pretty maluwag. You get your spare here and some tools. What I don't like about it is that this one doesn't have the the string thing so when you're putting your stuff inside this is what you look like. Me pretending to put things inside. Oh, it's locked. So at first I found it a bit hassle because there's no string to hold it up when you open the whole hatch and you were holding it up to put items inside but if you just, you know, push it far enough it actually locks the place. So okay naman pala. So when you need more space, you can just fold the seats. So it's not really fold flat, but that's still a lot of space to work with. So we have a new metric to measure trunk space. Me for scale. So over here at the top, you actually have your early warning device. Easily accessible for when you need early warnings. So here's the key and one of my favorite things about it is that you just have to go closer for it to unlock ah. without clicking anything Chang. and you just have to move far away for it to lock without clicking anything okay so let's start to do the driving part so we can start with ergonomics so what I love about this car is it's so easy to find the seating position and all the controls are within reach. Major learning curve lang yung steering wheel because of its unique shape and size. It's so small. And with my reclined seating position that I'm used to, it slightly blocks the dash. But if I sit slightly more upright, I see everything no problem. The steering wheel has a very interesting shape. So it's very small. And then you have flat top, flat bottom. So it's a bit of a learning curve, lalo na if you enjoy your round wheels like me. But it gives you good command. This compact steering makes sense with how light it is. The steering is super light, but it has really good steering feel. There I say better feel than some of the more modern performance oriented cars I've driven. So side note, by steering feel, I don't mean steering weight. So steering weight is different from steering resolution or fidelity. So you can compare that to 
the sound system terms that you can have a loud system but not have good fidelity. So that's what I'm kind of trying to say about this. So the car's front visibility is super good. The rear, it's okay. Um, not as good as the front. Um, it has that modern car characteristic where all the windows are so much smaller. But it's livable because of the backup camera and the proximity sensors. So notice how I didn't say 360 camera. Um, that's because we only have one camera at the back. And the way it makes it seem 360 is that it stitches or it tries to remember the surroundings and it stitches it together to make the bigger picture. So yeah, that's nice. Parang naka 360 camera ka na din with this one. So this car also has blind spot monitoring. So that plus the backup camera really helps out with the visibility. As for the brakes, the brakes are so good. There's nothing much to say about it aside from it being good. So the car's handling, it has that Peugeot signature nimble and very involving driving experience. Comfort-wise, the suspension is not a sofa. So the suspension is tuned towards the fun side. But don't get me wrong, it's not matagtag. It takes bumps really well. So what's also nice is that you have ground clearance on this car. So the surprise of roading experiences that we have every day, wala lang siya dito. It takes the bumps really well. Actually, we, I've been using this for a few days now and I did some errands wherein I was forced to be in a situation na puro moon crater yung dinaanan ko. And this may not be my choice for those situations, but it took it well. We didn't scrape and we didn't bottom out. So yeah, that's pretty good. Now, pair this handling with a surprisingly peppy and capable power plant. Mmm, yummy. Such a good experience. It was actually super surprising because I drove this car muna without looking at the brochure. It's like, oh, nice. This is pretty powerful. Only to find out it's a 1.2, so that was very surprising because the car feels like it's not 1.2 liters. So it's a car that feels nimble on the road. By nimble, I mean it gives you the capability to position yourself. So if I want to overtake this guy, or if I want to tuck back behind the person, it's so easy. You have ample power. Your command on the car is so good. Oh, I forgot to mention. You know what's nice? The plus minus shifter sport mode is actually correct. So downshifting is forward and upshifting is going towards me. So that's nice. So here's the piece de resistance of this car. So I've been driving this for five days already to do car errands. So paranyake. The Bulacan, so we did some city, some highway, some really heavy traffic, and we're still half tank. So if you look at our fuel needle, it's right smack dab in the middle. So this car has 44 liter tank capacity. We've already done around 373 kilometers, and the range indicator says we can still do about 260 kilometers. It's crazy! It almost feels like it's not gasoline powered. Parang powered by hopes and dreams just sobrang tipid. We really were testing this car out without any regards for fuel economy. Kaya it was so unbelievable that after 5 days of driving it, yun lang, yun palang ang sinisip-sip mong gas. <laughs> crazy! So in conclusion, this car is still pretty much a daily. Tipid sa gas, easy to drive, and it's a nice place to be in, interior-wise. So as a driving enthusiast, I super enjoyed the car. It showed me na your daily commute need not be soulless. It could be a fun experience. I could still have fun going from point A to B. I don't need to drive a one-ton washing machine appliance thing. There was not a minute I regretted being in traffic or driving it. It's fun to be in, it's fun to drive. It would make my daily commute way more easier. Hindi siya nakakapagod din basically. Like, ang taas pa ng health bar ko even if I go through 
hellish traffic with it. So my health bar is okay and his fuel bar would probably still be okay. So basically, it depends in terms of driving effort or driver fatigue. It's so light to drive and it's so comfortable to be in. I don't feel like I'm working so hard to drive this car. And it's tipid fuel consumption wise. So you're saving up on all those resources, but you still get lots of fun. So generally, I super enjoyed driving this car. Nakakagana siya mag drive kasi hindi siya nakakapagod. Tsaka siya. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for joining me as I drive this 2022 Peugeot 2008. Such a fun car. I don't want to return it, actually. So yeah, if you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, or maybe subscribe even. And if you want to interact with me outside of YouTube, we have Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. So yeah, yun lang. Thanks for joining me. Goodbye. See you on the next video. Yun lang. Stu -tu -tu. Hon, hon, hon. I am an angry French baguette. <laughs> it's a little lion. Simba. Yung ganon. Yun yung vibe.